Hi, this is Kaylee, and let's talk about an Atwood machine where the massive pulley actually matters. And so we've got a pulley system here where we got M2 and M1. M2 is three times the mass of M1, and the pulley is half the mass of M1. So everything's in terms of M1, and we're going to use that later. And we're going to figure out the acceleration of the system, first algebraically, and then we'll throw in some numbers to see how that affects things, or if it does. So if I've got an Atwood machine, I usually start off like this. The force that's making it move equals the force on the system. Now what's making it move is the difference in the two masses. Well, actually the difference in the two weights. And so M2 is heavier, so I'm going to have it first. M2 minus M1 because it's the difference in the weights, so I'll multiply by gravity, equals the system, which is M1 plus M2, times the acceleration of the system. But we also have to account for the pulley. So we have to add in the torque from the pulley. And so we need to take care of this term, because everything else is in terms of forces, not in torque. So we've got to change that somehow. Well, we've got a couple of things that we could do. First of all, angular acceleration is equal to A over R, where R is the radius of our pulley in this case. So that's something that we're going to hold on to. But also what we have is this. The moment of inertia for a disk is one-half M R squared. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and we know the mass of our disk is actually one half of M1. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. We got one half of one half of M1 R squared. So that's really one fourth M1 R squared. That's our moment of inertia for our pulley. Okay, we've got that. That's good. Hold on to it. We still got to take care of this torque term. So torque is equal to I alpha. That's why I have this over here. Or it can be equal to R, or sorry, F cross R. Now either one of those will fit in there, but I'm actually going to um, do a little algebra manipulation here. I want this in terms of F because Everything else is in, is in a force. So I want this in force as well. So if I solve for F, get F equals I alpha over R. Well, we already know what I is right there. That is one-fourth M1 R squared. And then we're dividing by R. So I'm going to go ahead and put divide by R. Then we have alpha. Alpha is A over R. Well, we've got two radii at the top, two radii at the bottom. So these cancel out each other. We get that the force is equal to one-fourth M1A. So we're going to use that and substitute it in here for the torque because... That is torque simp solved for F. So here we go. And I'm going to go ahead and put everything in terms of M1. So M2 is actually 3M1. So I'm going to put 3M1 minus M1G equals M1 plus 3M1A plus what we just figured out here, one-fourth M1A. So we've got everything over here in terms of A, which is good. This in terms of G, that's fine. Um, I want to go ahead and simplify this and go ahead and get rid of the M1s. So if we do this, we're going to get 2M1G equals 4M1A plus one-fourth M1A. Since there's an M1 in all the terms, 
we can cancel that out. So the masses actually, since we got everything in terms of M1, that can cancel out. If we rewrite to make it look nicer, we got 2G equals 4A plus 1 fourth A. Uh, least common denominator would be 4, so that's 16 over 4. Let's, let's go ahead and do that. Let's do our, our, our fractions here. So that's going to be 16 over 4A plus 1 over 4A gives me 17 over 4A. I'm going to go ahead and simplify this a little bit, and then I want to cross multiply. So we got 2G equals 17 over 4A. I'm going to go ahead and move that over. So the 4 will go out top, 17 will go on the bottom. And when we do that, we get 8 over 17G equals my acceleration. And so that is this solved for the acceleration of our system. It's 8 over 17G, whatever that number is. Let's go ahead and put our masses in and see what we get and compare it to whatever this is. We'll figure that out on the next page. Okay, here's the same question. Except this time I'm actually going to substitute in the masses. So we're going to start off the same way. Force that's making it move equals the force on the system. What's making it move is the difference in the two weights. So we have 15 minus 5 times G. I'm going to go ahead and leave it in terms of G for right now. Equals 5 plus 15A. Because we got the difference in the two masses here. And that's the total mass times A. But we also got this torque from the pulley that we have to deal with. Well, we got a couple of things. Like I did on the last page, we have got alpha can be equal to A over R. And moment of inertia of a disk is one half M R squared. We don't know what R is, but we do know what the mass of the pulley is. The mass of the pulley is one half M1. So and M1 is 5 kilograms, so that's going to be one half of 2.5 R squared. So that's going to be 1.25 R squared is our moment of inertia. Let's slide that up so you can see it. All right, so we're going to hold on to that. Can't do much with this, but that's okay. We're going to hold on to these two. But we know that torque can be found by either moment of inertia times the rotational acceleration or force cross distance, or in this case, radius. Now let's solve this for F. So F equals I alpha over R. But we know I is actually 1.25 R squared we still divide by R. Alpha, alpha is A over R. We got two R's on top, two R's on the bottom. So we get 1.25 A is going to go in for our force. So let's go ahead and plug those in. And do a little math as we go. So this is going to be 10 G equals 20A plus 1.25A. So we got 10G equals 21.25A. Gravity is 9.8, so this is going to be 98. So 
was gravity is 9.8. 9.8 times 10 is 98. 21.25a. Solve for a, so we're going to take 98 divided by 21.25, and we get an acceleration of 4.61 meters per second squared. Now on the previous page, we found out that a was equal to 8 over 17 g. Well, let's actually figure out what that is. So, if we go 8 over 17 times 9.8, we're going to get, let's see, 9.8 times 8 divided by 17 gives me 4.61 meters per second square, which is the exact same answer we've got here. So everything worked out just fine. So, at least when we have all the masses in terms of M1, we can solve it algebraically. But if we don't, we can still do the same process, plugging in the numbers, and get the exact same answer. So, this is how you handle a pulley that is also going to factor in as part of our system. Thank you very much, and tune in again for some more physics. Goodbye.